Today we have Juniper. This comes to us from viewer and friend Arlen Sanborn, and I just love it already. I've got a lot of hours into preparing it to see if it's turnable at all. I'm really hoping so. Look at that exterior. Look at those sides on the outside. Incredible. Just incredible. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy. Let's take a little closer look at it. The piece is about 10 inches by 14 inches by 3 inches thick. Just look at that exterior. Isn't that incredible? There will be no turning on the outside. In fact, we're going to do as little turning as possible on this. Just want to make a bowl, put a tenon on it, that's about it. Part of the reason for that is all the cracks. If you can see, there's just plenty of cracks, and these around the outer edge really bother me. So, I, like I say, I spent a lot of time yesterday preparing this, and I put CA in every crack I could find. And then, I did something I've never done before. You see that right there? Well, this has been separated at one time, all of this. All of this, I guess, came off, maybe. Because Arlen took glue and put it back together. There's glue down inside that crack. See it there? And then over here, there's glue in that crack. So I think that whole piece might have come off at one time, and he glued it back on. And I was talking to him about it, and he said he did a piece like this. It came apart on him as soon as he turned on the lathe that went flying across the shop. <laughs> So he put two three-inch screws in it. Well, that's never occurred to me to put a screw in a bowl that I was going to turn. So I got to looking at it, and mostly this seems to be pretty well attached now with glue or whatever's holding it. I'm not sure. But this, this, is, this crack was separating this part from this part. So I drilled a hole in there with a... Well, I wish I could remember what they're called. It's a combination drill bit that drills a hole and countersinks at the same time. And I ran a three-inch screw in there, but it didn't sit down far enough in inside the, the recess that it made countersink so I pulled the screw out and I redrilled the hole a little deeper put the screw back in still didn't sit in there far enough pulled it out drilled deeper and the drill bit broke off so that's what you're looking at is the drill bit and I can't get it out of there it's too small to grab I tried little needle nose channel locks and they won't grab it and I tried regular needle nose pliers they won't grab it so it's just gonna be there I'm not sure if I'll fill it once this is all said and done if it stays together I'm just not gonna put the effort into reset Processing it, grinding it away, and filling it and whatnot, only to have the whole piece fall apart. So I'll do that later if I do it at all. I might just leave it as a battle scar. Kind of cool, but it's sharper than all get out. So it needs to be ground down at least some. Anyway, so this is what we have. Oh, here's the bottom. I'm going to put a tenon on there. I've marked a spot here for the center, right here. I'm going to drill a hole for my woodworm screw. We'll get it mounted up on the lathe and see if this thing will stay together. Let's get to it. I've marked two circles for a tenon. The inner one is for my smaller tenon, and that's what I thought I'd go with. But because that's made up mostly of this bark inclusion, I went ahead and made a larger one for my larger jaws, and I think that's what we'll go with. I think I stand a better chance. It still includes the bark inclusion, but it includes more solid wood around it, so I think I'll probably go with that. Oh, I don't know how fast we're going to be turning because I thought you'd want to see this explode, so I didn't test the speed yet. So I'm going to stand way over there and turn this thing on and see what kind of speed we can get. Go right there, about 500 RPM. 5 8 inch bowl guides, mask and face shield on, and positive thoughts, okay? Help me out here. Well, that's about what I wanted to do. Now I need to square up the sides of the tenon. Well, actually, the larger jaws require a dovetail, so rather than use my diamond point tool like I usually do, this wood is just too soft and too delicate. I'm going to use a swept back bowl gouge to put that dovetail on there.
And that'll work. Time for sanding. I got to looking this over and this bark, this bark inclusion was really loose in here. So I picked at it a little bit and it all just fell out. So that's our tenon. I still feel okay about it. We've got a full tenon all the way here. Most of one here. Full tenon here. So we're only missing it right there. I don't feel real good about it, but I feel good enough to proceed. Don't ever do what I do, please. To, I'm just I'm just showing you what I do. I'm not showing you what you should do. Don't do this stuff. I'm old. I figure I've lived a nice long life already, so what the heck. But you're probably, you know, young. So uh, don't take your life in your hands. Don't, don't do what I do, please. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start sanding with my Sandoflex. This is 180 grit, and that's as fine as I'll go. And I'm going to sand all of the outside here. And probably in this area here with the Sandoflex. When I'm done with that, I'll switch to my 2 inch disc starting at 80 grit. And I'll sand all of the turned parts and I'll work up through 400 grit. I'll have the lathe spinning in reverse mostly, maybe some forward, at about 350 RPM. I'll show you what those look like as soon as I get my mask on. So I'll do it all the way around in that direction and then I'll do this direction. And that should smooth it out. A lot of these little points are kind of sharp so I got to get that good and smooth. But that's what that looks like. And then to get inside here, I'll turn forward. So that's not too bad. I'll be doing that for a while, I think. And then I will bring you back and we'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Off camera, I, after I did all the sanding, I put a straight edge across here. And this tenon was a little bit higher than the edge. So I brought my tool vest up, grabbed my gouge, brought it down below this edge. So I'm not going to have to remove this tenon. I'm going to leave it just as it is because it's quite beautiful, I think. I don't know any way to improve upon it. Removing it would take all the nature out of the piece. Isn't that great the way it looks? A lot of this is going to have to be brushed, of course. I just like to get a base coat of this on before. It helps keep the brush strokes from showing. And then I go over after with a rag as well, after brushing to get rid of any brush strokes. Boy, my voice is going. I'm tired. This was a lot of sanding, I'll tell you. But I like the idea of not removing the tenon. That, that'll save some problem. Part of the reason is because I don't no longer have a center hole either because it was right in the middle of that bark inclusion. Today's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Oh this is going to be pretty isn't it? Now this hole right here that goes all the way up through the top so when I turn the bowl I'm going to stay inside of it and leave that which means we're going to have a fairly small bowl. If I didn't do that we'd have a big old nasty looking hole. So I've got some sanding sealer in this little can and I've got my brush and I'm just going to start brushing. Yeah, if this stays together so we can get a bowl on the other side, we're going to have something special. So I'm going to put on two coats of this sanding sealer. This wood is very porous. It's going to take at least two coats. And then two coats of shellac and I'll bring you back and we'll start working on the inside. So far so good. See you tomorrow. I have the piece turned around with the tenon mounted up in my larger chuck jaws. I've marked a circle on here where I want to stay inside of it. Partly because this is that broken off drill bit right here. And then mostly because of this. I don't want to get into that, so we're here. Like I said, it's going to be a smaller bowl, but that's okay. There's so much here to see. Uh, it just about doesn't even need a bowl, but it's going to get one. If it'll stay together. Gosh, I hope so. I just really hope so. We're going to be turning at 550 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask, and face shield on. Can you hear that, how it sounds kind of hollow from all the cracks?
I'm just going to be taking it real easy. I said easy. Well, it's coming along. No rush. I'm happy with the distance here. I feel okay about that. I wish it was a screw instead of a drill bit, but the drill bit's keeping it from separating this way. It's not keeping it from separating that way, but yeah, we're doing all right. I probably have the speed running fast for your viewing, but of course for me it's running normal and I keep hearing this pop, pop, pop. So I'm hoping all of these inclusions and cracks and whatnot aren't giving way. It sounds like they are, but I don't see any issues. I'm going to go sharpen up. As gently as I can, I need to work on this edge right here because I had that screw up where the chisel skated back on me. And I have to be gentle because of these cracks. If I press too hard, any one of those could catch and tear this thing apart. That's that's what I'm thinking. So I'm just I'm going to hold the gouge this way and I'm just going to gently kind of scrape that edge and then work my way over until I get rid of this whoopsie. Also this top is not flat. If I hold my finger over here and and over here uh, I can't remember. I think this is I think this is the low spot. And for the same reason because of this I didn't want to try and turn the top flat. I don't really care that it's not flat. That doesn't bother me at all. It doesn't have anything to do with what this piece is going to look like or feel like or anything else. But I'm just telling you, because it's not flat, it's going to hit here and not over there. Actually, it's going to hit here a lot. And when I get over here, it's a half an inch away. So I'm not sure how that's going to work with, with what I want to do here on this corner. But... I'll see what I can do. It's scary. This whole thing is scary. Now see it's not even uh, all that work that I've just done and you see how it's rounded here, kind of rounded, and I haven't even touched here. That's because this is the low spot. I can take care of that with sanding, I can just sand this round so it'll look okay. I think I've taken it about as far as I can. It looks like heck now, but it won't. Okay, back at it. Because that tenon's only partially there, I'm having a hard time finding a place with all there. All right, we're, we're at about a half inch. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I'm just going to call it good. Time for sanding.
I think that'll do it. I'm gonna leave it there. Like I said, it's just a battle scar. It's uh, it's no longer sharp. It's recessed in there. I could plug it. I could fill it with something, but I kind of like it. I mean, it's in keeping with everything else. We've got glue showing over here. You probably can't see it, but we've got glue showing and all these cracks and crevices and inclusions and whatnot. I think it's just part of the piece. I'm going with it. I spent some time doing some spot sanding with the piece not spinning. I rounded over, I think it's this edge that was that was low and, and didn't get rounded over when I was using my gouge. So I did that. I got rid of some tool marks. I'm about to use my sandal flex. Now normally when you use a sandal flex, you want these pieces of sandpaper to be the same length as the brush and that's the way I always use it you can probably see I've been using this I just extended it some because I want to get down inside here and I tried it uh, without extending it and it worked some I got some of it didn't get it all so I'm gonna do that again and then also inside of this crack here and that should be it for the sandal flex when I'm done with that I'll switch to my two inch disc starting at 80 grit and I'll sand the whole thing including this outside edge I think I can do that due to my soft pad even though there's a like a half inch difference in height I can't remember which one's higher and which one's lower but I guess this was this was the lower side because that's where I fixed it I, I think I'll be able to do it all with my two inch disc we'll find out and I'll show you what both of those look like as soon as I get my mask on Oh yeah, yeah, much better, much better, yay. And then with the lay spinning forward at about 350. Yeah. I think that's going to work just fine. So I'll do that up through 400 grit. I'll bring it back in a bit and we'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well, this is one of my favorite pieces, no doubt about that. And it's only going to get better here. And I say this a lot, but I wish you could feel this. It's just remarkably smooth. From where we came from, my gosh. This is a shellac-based sanding sealer, just like I applied on the outside. And then I'll put shellac over this. I do have to be careful not to go over this edge while I'm, it's all finished out here. Juniper, I think juniper trees get pretty big. Well, obviously, duh. Look at what we're dealing with. Pretty big piece. This took a lot of hand sanding, holding the disc in my hand and just going around these little edges along the top of the cracks because they get kind of sharp when you sand them. They get thinner and thinner and sharper and sharper, so took a lot of that. Yeah, looking good. What do you think? Now this is kind of a cool little added feature, isn't it? You could put, uh, I don't know, colored marbles or something in there, whatever. Some little things. Maybe some of my wife's crystals, colored crystals. Okay, I'll be doing this for a while. I'll bring you back and we'll take a good look at it because we don't have to take off the tenon. How cool is that? See you in a bit. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shot to this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, here it is. One juniper natural edge bowl in the books. I'm really curious what you think of this. Please let me know. Look at that exterior. Look at that. You know, you could spend hours with a Dremel tool trying to do that. And this came that way. How incredibly cool is that? I think it's just wonderful. Wonderful. Look at that. And the bottom? The bottom looks as good as the top. And I did sign it there. Found a little spot. 
but look at that tenon. <laughs> okay, maybe not a whole tenon, but that that's just as cool as the rest of it. Oh, I found out you can you can hang this. You want to hang it on the wall? You can hang it this way. The other end of this hole right here, back here. Just put that on a nail and hang it. Hang it on the wall, just like that. Use it as a bowl. Put uh, polished rocks in here, or colored rocks, or like I said, marbles, or I, I don't know, whatever, whatever you collect, whatever you like. It's just, it's just a wonderful piece of wood. Let me know what you think. Thank you, Arlen Sanborn, for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.